Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 382. On Now You Know. Thank you to Beam for sponsoring this episode. The holiday season is always a stressful time of year. With lots of travel and so much going on, it's hard to prioritize good sleep. We've been drinking Beam's Dream Powder and are really loving how we feel. Beam is like drinking a delicious cup of healthy hot cocoa formulated to help you get your best night's sleep, no matter what the season is. Beam has been super helpful in falling asleep. I fall asleep faster and my sleep seems more restful and deep. I wake up with more energy for my day. I've said before, it's like drinking a cup of anti-coffee. In that, you get to drink a comforting beverage right before you fall asleep, and it tastes like hot chocolate. Getting proper sleep helps to increase focus, boost energy, reduce stress, and support your immune response. Dream powders come in a range of customizations from different ingredient stacks to stronger potencies to a variety of flavors, making the experience of sleep easier, healthier, and more enjoyable. You pour one to two scoops into a mug of hot water or milk and blend or froth for a cozy finish. Sip 30 to 45 minutes before going to bed to enjoy your deepest night's sleep. We've really been enjoying the white chocolate peppermint lately. There is no added sugar. The drink is only 15 calories. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, non-GMO, and keto-friendly. New Year's is the perfect time to start implementing new healthy routines, and the best way to start doing so is with a deep sleep that leaves you feeling energized and ready to take on the day with zero grogginess. In a clinical study, 93% of participants reported Dream helped them get a better night's sleep and wake up feeling more refreshed. So click on the link in the description below or scan the QR code to get up to 40% off and don't miss out on this limited time offer. Thank you to Beam for sponsoring this episode. Happy New Year, everyone. If you're new to Tesla Time News, welcome and to all of our viewers who have joined us before. Welcome back to what should be an exciting year in the world of EVs, renewable energy, sustainability, and all things good for humanity and the planet. Let's dive right into our ninth year. But first of all, not good news. Did you hear about this, everybody? A Tesla robot attacked an engineer with its claws, leaving a trail of blood? Oh my god, the robot uprising has begun, and it's all Elon's fault! Yeah, that's just FUD. As Holmar's catalog explained, this article in the science section of Daily Mail makes it seem like Optimus decided to attack an engineer. What they're actually talking about is an injury involving the KUKA robot in the factory in 2021. Although injuries are horrible, they do not hint at a robotic uprising. And Andrew McCarthy says, attacks implies it made a decision. That robot did exactly as it was programmed to do. Apparently, the worker thought it was off when it wasn't. And so I just want to point out, this is a standard one arm robot that you see in factories all over the world. In fact, this hurt an engineer who is actually programming it. So he shut off the safety features mm. and normally they're inside a box. And, and as soon as you open the door to that box, they shut off. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of his fault. I mean, it's sad that it was an accident, but also it happened in 2021. And as Elon said, correct, truly shameful of the media to dredge up an injury from two years ago due to a simple industrial KUKA robot arm found in all factories and imply that it is due to Optimus now. So what you should be asking yourself is why an accident caused by a non-AI robot arm at Giga Texas in 2021 is now being reported so wildly by so many news outlets at the same time. Hmm. I wonder why. Could it be And Elon said this false story was parroted by hundreds of publications worldwide. And I mean, most of those stories told the tale, implying that Optimus did the attack, even though that happened in 2021, before Optimus was even a thing. I wonder what they're all worried about. So this is going to make a lot of New Englanders happy, this story here, especially Tesla owners in Vermont. Tesla is about to open a new Tesla store and service center in South Burlington, Vermont. It's located in what used to be the Hannaford supermarket, and Tesla now says their new location will open later in January. This is big news for a lot of customers in Vermont who had to either use Tesla's mobile service, which couldn't do more serious service work, or drive hours away to Latham, New York. And if they wanted to buy a new Tesla, they had to drive hours and hours down to New Jersey to pick it up. But in 2021, Vermont changed its laws to allow direct sales of EVs to customers. And South Burlington changed its local zoning bylaws. So now you can buy a new Tesla and pick it up in Vermont. Now, currently, there are only about 3000 Teslas registered in Vermont. That means that there are more power walls in Vermont than Tesla cars. There are currently over 4,000 power walls in Vermont. But also keep in mind that Vermont is the second least populated state with less than 650,000 residents. 
But you know, per capita, Vermont is in the top five in the country for EV drivers. And EV sales jumped 34% in 2023 from 2022. And now that Tesla has a store in Vermont, maybe sales will be on the rise. In Crittenden County, where the new Tesla store is opening, one in every 47 people owns an EV. This is also going to be great for a lot of customers in New Hampshire as well and help reduce the load from the Massachusetts and New York Tesla service centers as well. Yeah. Connecticut also just got a new Tesla store at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And this is because the Mohegan tribe owns that land, which means it gets around the Connecticut stupid state law that bans direct sales of cars. Now, just before Christmas, Tesla had a signing ceremony for the new land in Shanghai where Tesla will build its newest mega factory. Tesla already has a gigafactory in Shanghai. Uh, no, this is different. This is a mega factory to build Tesla mega packs, the utility scale battery pack. So like the mega factory that Tesla opened in Lathrop, California, this mega factory will produce about 10,000 mega packs or 40 gigawatt hours per year when it's fully up and running at scale next year. Pack production should start around the end of this year if Tesla stays on schedule for building the factory out. We don't know yet exactly where this location is, but we do know that the western edge of the property butts up against the Fenzhen district in Shanghai, so it could be very close to the Shanghai Gigafactory, which would make sense. This will also help Tesla logistically to have two locations to ship mega packs from. So here's something you don't see every day, a Tesla Model Y towing a full-size trailer. Whoa, how is it doing that? They're using a converter dolly, basically something that converts the fifth wheel kingpin hitch into a standard hitch you'd find on a truck or SUV. Is that even legal? Most likely not. W won't that destroy the car? Well, the dolly is taking the weight off the tongue. Oh, okay. um, so that that's why the back of the car isn't dragging on the ground. But it certainly could do some damage if they tried to accelerate or brake too hard. Although we think that this is probably an empty trailer. I mean, having the Model Y's torque at your disposal is going to make that a much easier task than with your run of the mill SUV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, as, as silly as it is, I do think that it's awesome. If anybody knows who this is, please put us in touch. We'll do our best to try and hide your identity from Tesla since they're definitely going to want to avoid your warranty. By the way, how much is the weight of that trailer? Well, even empty, um, you're talking about 10 to 15,000 pounds. Okay, but isn't the Model Y only rated at a towing capacity of 3,500 pounds? Yes, but these are kind of slow speeds on surface roads. We think that it's basically going between two loading yards. So it's acting as a shunt. And, you know, normally a shunt would cost over $100,000. It would also be, you know, it would have all the safety features. So there's that, but I think it's cool. All right, check this out. A Tesla Electric customer in Texas posted this on X. RG said, first full year on Tesla Electric in Texas, ended the year with a credit of $1,098.76 that I've been given the option to cash out. Between sellback credits and VPP, this is amazing. Thank you, Tesla Energy, Drew Baglino, and Elon Musk. And to prove it, they shared their Tesla electric statements. And Tesla Senior Vice President of Powertrain and Energy posted, best deal out there if you have a power wall in deregulated ERCOT territory. And if you don't, Tesla Energy can help. So RG has 12.24 kilowatts of solar and three power walls. Yeah. And again, for those of you who are like, how is this even possible? Tesla can aggregate hundreds of Tesla customers who have power walls using AutoBidder. That's their utility power bidding aggregator program. They can sell the utility electricity from these power walls when the grid really needs it in 15 minute increments and get really good prices for it when they can and then share that with Tesla electric customers like RG. Again, RG used electricity all year long and actually made money. It's called VPPs, folks, virtual power plants. We've been talking about them for years and they work to make the grid cheaper and more resilient. So Tesla went to court in Sweden last month to get the Swedish Postal Service, PostNord, to start delivering mail again, including license plates to Tesla delivery centers. As you may recall, union postal workers at PostNord were honoring IF Metals union strike that started on October 27th in sympathy against Tesla. Tesla appealed to the Swedish courts to force them to deliver their mail. But according to Bloomberg, Tesla lost the case. Now, Sweden is Tesla's fifth biggest market in Europe, but it now appears that Tesla will have to keep using its workaround in Sweden, whereby the license plates are sent directly to new buyers' homes, which kind of slows down the delivery process by a few days. The Swedish mechanics strike over collective bargaining rights has spread to dock workers unions in Sweden, Finland, Denmark and Norway. And even retirement funds in Denmark and Norway are now refusing to hold Tesla stock in solidarity with the unions. Despite the Swedish IF metal union striking against Tesla for the past three months, uh, the Model Y was the best selling car in Sweden in 2023. The Model Y beat out both the Volvo XC40 and the Volvo XC60. 
And by the way, if you're looking at this chart and you're like, wait a minute, those five best-selling cars in Sweden are electric. Does that mean that the Model Y was the best-selling electric car in Sweden? Nope. The Model Y was the best-selling car in Sweden, period. Yes, it happened to be electric, just like the other four best-selling cars in Sweden in 2023. So take that, ICE cars. Yeah, take a look at this chart. EVs made up 36% of total car sales in Sweden in 2023. And Elon posted, yay, Sweden, thanks to the excellent Tesla team in Sweden. So it turns out that even with all the unions throwing all their might against Tesla, um, cancel them down. It didn't really have much of an effect. Yeah. So hopefully the people in Sweden will speak up. Yeah. We'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. It really helps us to spread this video to more people. Legacy media really has it in for Elon Musk. That is obvious. They spin everything he does or says as negatively as they can. Their FUD stories are nothing new. But how much does Elon's controversies and negative perception in the media really turn away potential Tesla customers? Well, let's go to the data. Survey said. What data? How can you quantify that? Well, Heatmap just released a new independent survey of a thousand Americans that showed that Elon actually made 35% of those surveyed more likely to purchase a Tesla. Check out this chart. Blue is more likely to drive an EV in the future because of Elon. And this is up slightly from when they held the survey last February. Red is less likely, and that's down from 36% in February to just 27% in November. And no impact is in gray, and that went up slightly as well. But I mean, no matter where you go on the internet or especially the media, they're always talking about like, oh my gosh, Elon's latest tweet. He tweeted something and we don't think that we like it. Um, and especially if you take it out of context and if we tell you that he's a crazy billionaire that and he's the richest man in the world and therefore you should hate him, uh, then you should you should hate what he just tweeted. I mean, this is kind of what the media does, right? They play up how many people dislike Elon, trying to get you onto that train, but they never talk about how many people actually like Elon and what he's doing for humanity. And I think that's the part they miss. There's a lot of people out there, like us and probably you, that like what he's doing and they don't really care what he tweets about. Right. Well, and they're also just going to misreport it. They're like, oh, SpaceX? Oh my, that's because he's a crazy billionaire. He wants to go to space personally. It's like, what about Starlink? What about all the astronauts who got to go to space this year? Well, it's interesting. If you dig into the data, 35% of men said that Musk has made them more likely to buy a Tesla, but only 15% of women said the same. I also want to point out that these surveys, which surveyed people in all 50 states by Benenson Strategy Group, are only as good as the sample. Mm. And I can't remember the last time I took part in a survey. I used to do it more frequently when I was younger. Um, I've always wondered if the type of person who would subject themselves to a survey, because let's be honest, they take a while, is different from the type of person who doesn't. We should run a poll on that. <laughs> now, for those of you who watch our Now Let's Review channel, you may remember that we have reviewed a couple Sondors products. Oh, yeah. The Sondors Fold XS Folding Fat Tire E-Bike and the Sondors Metacycle Electric Motorcycle. And I think that I speak for both of us when I say... We really like those products. Yeah, I mean, the Fold XS is actually one of my favorite folding fat tire e-bikes. It has great suspension, plenty of power, an all-round fun bike for off-roading and urban riding. And even though the Metacycle's range is a little on the low side for a motorcycle, there's no denying that the solid one-piece aluminum body is a head-turner and a really fun motorcycle to ride. Yeah, your grandfather loves riding it. But why are we talking about these? Well, unfortunately, Sondors, which is based in California and was founded by designer Storm Sondors in 2015, has had trouble filling its backlog of orders for the Metacycle last year. Yeah, don't they have like 10,000 orders for the Metacycle? Yeah, they have over $19.9 million in cash deposits for the motorcycle. So what's the problem? That's all great news, isn't it? Well, something has gone seriously wrong because now Sondors is in receivership. Is that bankruptcy? No, it's not the same as bankruptcy. If you go bankrupt, a bankruptcy court decides what to do with your company's assets, oftentimes allowing the company to kind of reform and continue. Receivership is when the creditors of the struggling company themselves sell off the company's assets in order to get repaid. It's usually much faster than bankruptcy proceedings, which can take years. So in this case, Rock Creek Financial Advisors is looking for offers of interest up until January 19th. So what are they selling? Well, Sondors own some trademarks and some patents. They claim, for instance, to have a patent for an electric motorcycle. Oh, wow. <laughs> no wonder you don't see that many on the road. The company will buy the Sondors lineup and continue making their products. I mean, Sondors did sell 63,000 electric e-bikes 
And as we just said, there are thousands of people who want the MetaCycle. Yeah, I mean, my guess would be a Chinese company would buy Sondors uh, because they already make these things in China. Mm. And so you're right, there's like 10,000 people who want the MetaCycle. So it does make sense that it has some value to keep making it. But as we talk about all the time, it's not easy to make something and make a profit on it. I mm. think that's where they kind of had trouble, right? They could make the MetaCycle, but I'm guessing it lost the money. Because, I mean, remember, they had to keep raising the price of it. It That's started true. as a $5,000 motorcycle, which was pretty sexy, and then it went up to like a $6,000, $7,000 motorcycle. All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeah, The Cybertruck Roundup. How about a Cyber DJ? This is from the end of year delivery event that happened at the Fremont factory with Tesla's resident DJ in the bed of a Cybertruck. They have a resident DJ? I used to be a DJ, and if I could have showed up in the back of a Cybertruck, <laughs> I would have been so much cooler than I, I was. You could have been Tesla's resident DJ. That's, that's, that's a, killer, a job. That's a killer that's job. That's a cool job. <laughs> Cyber DJ here, folks. <laughs> I don't know if you keep up the energy every day. <laughs> It's Monday, everybody. Let's go. And how about this Easter egg spotted in the Cybertruck's UI? It gives your avatar Cybertruck a busted window. Teslanomics said, Elon, you a fool for this one. Thanks for always making a Tesla so much fun. And Elon said, we like to put fun little Easter eggs in our cars. Small, unexpected delights are part of what makes life worth living. So as we've been learning, as new owners take deliveries of their Cybertrucks, there's different kind of hidden features, including this one that we spotted on Jay Leno's latest video with Franz and Lars. Tesla has pre-wired 48 volts to both the frunk and the roof of the Cybertruck for future attachments like a roof light bar. The roof light bar, according to Lars Moravi, Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, is laser lit and can illuminate up to 1,500 feet. That's 450 meters away. Okay, but like how far away is that? I'm an American, so explain it to me like that. How many football fields is that? Five football fields. Five football fields. That's pretty far. Yes. <laughs> Now, I hunted through the Cybertruck accessories page on the Tesla website, but I could not find the roof light bar yet. But hopefully it's coming soon. Yeah, it is not there. I, I assume it's going to be a Tesla product, but maybe third parties can also make one. Another thing we learned from Jay Leno's video was when Franz von Holzhausen, Tesla's head of design, said this. We are working on inductive charging. You don't even need to plug anything in at that point. You just drive over the pad in your garage and you start charging. Hang on. Does that mean that the Cybertruck already has the hardware installed to charge wirelessly? We don't know. Uh, that would be really cool if it was already installed. But my guess is that it's something coming out later in later iterations, maybe as an added feature that you could have installed at a Tesla service center. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Below. I mean, it would be really cool if it's already there. Mm -hmm. So somebody wanted to test out the efficiency of their Cybertruck the other day, and here's what we got. Um, so there's a couple different numbers here. I'm just going to look at the 147 miles in two hours and seven minutes, and they get a, an efficiency of 416 watt hours per mile. Okay. So that's an average speed of about 70 miles an hour. Oh, that's, so. yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. That's more than two miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, and that's way better than what we get in the Ford F-150 or the Rivian. Yes. So, and that's 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Usually, you know, you don't expect to get that great when you're going that fast. So I'm pretty excited about that. But we don't know temperature. We don't know a lot of other things. Right. But that should point to over 300 miles of range. Yeah. Which is exciting. Whoa. <laughs> Did someone take out the acrylic paint? What's going on? <laughs> so uh, this is a gloss black cyber truck. How'd they do that? They got it wrapped. Oh, it's so a wrap. They, and then I get it, then I got blow, and then I got shut any little thing a nigga think be doing because it They spent okay. thousands of dollars to get it wrapped. Um, what does everybody think? So there's also a comparison between the matte black and the gloss black. I think as a lot of people have pointed out, as soon as you look at the car, you're going to have to to wipe off all the fingerprints. Sure, but it's, it looks really good. Yes, but wow. again, and then if you drive the car, how long before it's all scratched up and it doesn't look Yeah, the same. you know, but people who put wraps on their cars, like they they want to take care of their cars. They drive them differently. Right, it's probably, they're going to wax it every day right. and you know, what I mean, they'll be able to find their cyber truck in the parking lot. Everyone else will be wandering around like, which one is ours? They'll find theirs. <laughs> right, well, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. I like no. the stainless steel. I'm going to be able to find ours because we're going to have put stuff on it that true. we welded to it. And true. we're probably going to have bullet holes. In That's it. true. Or bullet dents. Yeah. What's um, this? This is the front camera washer. So the front camera on the Cybertruck is going to have a front washer. So it'll it'll spray the uh, the camera on the front of the Cybertruck. Does and it wash also off. wipe it off? Nope. It's just spray. Oh, so you put some kind of like hydrophobic 
spray on there? Like Rain-X? I'm Rain-X? not sure what kind of spray it is. I think it might be the pressure that might wash off like bug guts or whatever you get on. But I mean, them. how do you keep the little drips from getting on the lens? I don't know. I mean, it does look like whatever they're using is is kind of drying itself off mm. pretty quickly. So yeah, you might be right. Wow. And Joe Tegmeyer has spotted 85 Cybertrucks at Giga Texas. Yeah. Looks like a bunch of them, though, are still waiting for parts. But this was before the new year. It was kind of during the break. And I'm assuming some of the suppliers just were slow in getting whatever part that was they were waiting for. Yeah. But that's still really cool. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I've been looking at the numbers and it looks like since the delivery event in November that Tesla has delivered uh, over 500. So that's pretty good for the first month when you know that's going to be the slowest. Yeah. And uh, here's what Cybertruck dog mode looks like. So nice. get a cute Cyber little, dog. little pup. Oh, and by the way, we did finally get our app to say that we could configure our Cybertruck. So we have ordered it. We don't have a delivery date yet, but um, we're really excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, if you want to learn all this and more about Cybertrucks, go to the Cybertruck Owners Club. That's where we find out all our information. Now that we are going to be Cybertruck owners, we truly belong there. Um, and you can find out all this information and more along with your tracker so you can find out where you are in line. Super cool. So we just reviewed a product on Knowledge Review uh, that doesn't have an electric motor and it doesn't have batteries. It's not an EV charger. It's not a kitchen composter. It's not a smart irrigation system, although we've reviewed all of those products before. This week, we reviewed some dead cats for your ears. No, 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 no. Not, not dead cats. Dead cat is an industry slang term for those little fluffy things that you see on microphones to cut down on wind noise. So what are we doing with fluffy things in front of our ears, you ask? Well, you have to check out our video on Now Let's Review. I've worn them now for a whole bunch of e-bike rides, and I think they've become one of my new favorite e-bike accessories. We put them to the test scientifically in our review video to show how they work. And if you ride a bike or an e-bike, you don't want to miss this video. Go check it out and subscribe to our sister channel, Now Let's Review. It really helps us out to get more cool products to review for you. And the reason we started a separate channel, because you might be wondering, like, why don't we just stick it on this channel like we used to do, is because you told me years ago, it doesn't work that way on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, as we found out last week when we put out an in-depth about Light Horse, yeah. it didn't have to do with Tesla, so nobody wanted to watch it. Right, and even though it's called a YouTube channel, which you think could have multiple shows on it, because that's how channels work, it's not how YouTube likes to run things. No. They like to, they like it very specific, boring. So you have to, if you want, you can go subscribe to our Now Let's Review channel and you can check out all of our cool reviews over there. And by the way, last week we released that in-depth I just talked about, that video on Light Horse. If this looks fun to you, you may want to check out that video where we checked out the Light Horse in person and talked to one of their chief engineers and their CFO. And at the end of that video, we got Light Horse to offer an exclusive deal for our viewers. So if it did look fun to you, Check out that video and learn more. All right. Do you remember Trevor Milton, founder and former CEO of Nikola Corporation? Remember? Remember? Remember he said all kinds of things that turned out not to be true? But we're years ahead of our competition. We have over $14 billion in orders. We're sold out for four years in production. Yeah, this is what's really awesome about Nikola is when people are like, oh, they're all vaporware. Listen, we have the largest hydrogen station in the Western world operational at our headquarters. So piss off anyone who thinks that our, our company's vaporware. No one's ever been able to do that. Our company's done it and it's here at our headquarters and we're getting ready to roll that out across the country with 700 stations. Well, as you probably remember, Milton was found guilty of three out of four counts of securities and wire fraud last year, but his sentencing didn't take place until December 18th. Milton was sentenced to four years in a federal prison, seizure of all his property, a $1 million fine, and three years of supervised release after serving his sentence. Prosecutors had been seeking an 11-year sentence because they told the court that retail investors lost $660 million when Nikola stock fell from $80 a share to less than a buck a share. Didn't Milton buy a big ranch in Utah? He did. He bought a 2,000-acre ranch with a 16,800-square-foot mansion in 2019, which at the time was considered the most expensive property transaction to have ever taken place in Utah. How much did he buy it for? $32.5 million. And now the U.S. government has seized it and will likely auction it off to help pay restitution for Milton's crimes. Sorry, Milton. Well, but this here's is... where he's going to be living, uh, just so you know. It's it's actually a very big property in Utah. It's probably as big as the one he just left. And it's very safe. It's got a fence around the whole thing. So he's going to be fine. 
Oh, wow. This is a long time coming. We've been mm-hmm. covering Nicola for a long time. And yep. man, the whole time we've been saying, why isn't this guy in jail? Why isn't this guy in jail? Uh, and now, finally, he's going to jail. Yep. All right. We now turn to sunny California, where Aptera, the three-wheeled solar-powered EV startup, is getting closer to the start of production. We just learned from LinkedIn that Aptera has signed a deal with South Korean battery technology company, CTNS. The agreement covers two parts. Part one, CTNS will be installing battery production lines for Aptera and supply the battery packs for their solar EV as a tier one supplier. Part two is CTNS will be investing more than $15 million in Aptera with CTNS's CEO, Kyung Jong Kwan, saying during the signing ceremony with Aptera's co-founder, Chris Anthony, in Seoul, Korea, I believe that this is an important moment for CTNS to leapfrog to the future unicorn in global markets and sincerely appreciated to Chris Anthony and Aptera Motors to become our partner for the journey. Future unicorn. Interesting that CTNS sees Aptera as a potential billion dollar company. Yeah, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. And by the way, if you're thinking of getting an Aptera, you can use our link to reserve it. So when Tesla launched the Cybertruck, they also told us that they were going to start bi-directional charging with the Cybertruck. Right. And at the Cybertruck after party, we spoke with Joe Barletta from Smart Charge America, who explained how that would work. So basically, you could use the wall connector and a power wall to enable bi-directional charging. But now Tesla has just let it slip what they call the Tesla PowerShare mobile connector. Cool. So it, wait, how does that work? Well, all we have is the manual. Oh, that's too bad. But wait, the, the manual? Okay, so shouldn't that be exactly what we want in order to understand how it works? I mean, uh, let me see here. Um, okay, Tesla PowerShare mobile connector, table contents, safety warnings, FCC, overview, specifications, charging time, charging rates, the adapters, plugging in. Unplugging, connector status, nothing about di- connector status, nothing about bidirectional tr- troubleshooting, nothing, nothing, and that's it. Are we sure this is a bidirectional charger? I mean, there's nothing about bidirectional in there. It just looks like a mobile connector to me. But I mean, aren't there those balcony solar systems in Germany that plug right into the wall and give power to your house? Yes, but they have inverters. Uh, there isn't enough room, I don't think, in this mobile connector for an inverter. I mean, unless the Cybertruck has one built in, which it does. I mean, it has 110 and 220 AC circuits on board. So who's to say that the Cybertruck doesn't also have whatever gadgets on board to phase match the AC current with the wall power and backfeed your electrical panel? Because it's not allowed in the U.S. the same way it is in Germany. And besides, why would Tesla need the whole gateway system if the truck could do it? I mean, I'm sure the gateway could output more power, but it would be neat if it could work without all of that. I mean, even if it were just a few hundred watts. I don't think it would. Otherwise, the manual would mention it. No, that's a good point. I don't know. Yeah, we need to get our hands on it. We need to talk to Joe. We need to know more things. But this is exciting. I mean, because our truck that we just ordered says it comes with PowerShare. So we should be able to test this out for you and see if we can power our house. Mm -hmm. It's time, ladies and gents, bobs and girls, for Who's Adding Next this week. It's been a while, hasn't it, Bob? It has been a while, Bob. I was thinking maybe this day would never come, but it appears that VW, Audi, and Porsche have held out as long as they could, and now they have adopted the NAX, or Tesla plug standard. By the way... Audi is owned by VW, and VW is owned by the Porsche Peach family, with a majority stake of 53.3%. And who owns Porsche? Or is that a dumb question? There are no dumb questions, Bob. Only dumb auto companies. Porsche is owned by the Porsche Peach family, with a majority stake of 53.1%. And what other car companies does VW own? VW owns Bugatti, Bentley, Lamborghini, Seat, Skoda, and Ducati. So wait, Bob, that just leaves one major auto company that hasn't adopted NAX yet. That's right, Stellantis is the last holdout. I want to be clear though, Bob, VW didn't say anything about Lamborghini, Bentley, or Bugatti, but I'm sure that's coming. So when does VW say that it'll have Tesla plugs on its car? VW says that it's exploring adapter solutions for existing vehicles to access the Tesla supercharger network starting in 2025. And the next plug will be installed on their EVs starting in 2025. And this just in, Bob, VW's Scout EV brand will come with the Nax plugs when it debuts in 2026. 2026. Well, okay, so it looks like we'll meet again, Bob, when Stellantis finally adds the Nax standard. Or when they go out of business, Bob. So what would you do if you saw this? Oh, no. Is that a Tesla on fire? Call, call the fire department. No, 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 no. It's not on fire. That is steam, not smoke. What? 
Now that we are entering the winter season, I just wanted people to be aware that this can happen and it's totally fine. So what's happening? FireSafe made an excellent video explainer, um, but we'll let Tesla explain here. What? Okay, so this is going to generally happen while supercharging. Basically, on your way to the supercharger, your car is going to be preconditioning the battery. It's going to heat it up to make supercharging faster. If your car is a heat pump, it's gonna be taking heat from the ambient air and pumping it into the car. And the external heat exchanger, AKA the evaporator, is going to get really, really cold. And the moisture in the air will condense and freeze on the evaporator. Then, when you plug into charge, your car will now use the heat pump in the opposite way. It will try to cool the pack as it supercharges. This will heat up the external heat exchanger and you will evaporate that frozen moisture off of it. And when you evaporate water, you get steam. I see, but why are we just starting to see this happen? Well, Tesla only started adding heat pumps to their cars back in early 2022. Mm. So this is only the third, maybe second and a half winter that you could have a car that did this. I see. So before you freak out and call 911, be sure that it's smoke and not steam. So, I mean, you could kind of smell it. I'm not saying stick your face in the, in the smoke slash steam, but um, the steam isn't going to have any kind of smell. Um, the smoke is going to smell like burning batteries. VinFast, the Vietnamese-based EV maker, has announced that it is changing its sales plans from a direct-to-consumer model like Tesla to a hybrid plan that now includes traditional auto dealers. Its first auto dealer will be Leith Automotive Group in Cary, North Carolina, just down the road from VinFast's EV factory in Chatham County. So VinFast has an EV factory in North Carolina? Well, not yet. It's building a $4 billion factory, which VinFast says should be completed in 2025. So I know that VinFast started selling their VF8 and their VF9 EVs in the U.S. back in March of 2023, which they shipped in from Vietnam. Uh, and I heard that they may be selling their much cheaper VF3 here, too. Yeah, the VF8 starts at $47,000 with 264 miles of charge for the base model. But VinFast announced a mini car back in June, the VF3 in Vietnam, which starts at under $20,000. It's a mini car? Yeah, it's only 10.2 feet or 3.1 meters long, but this mini SUV can seat five people somehow. But, I mean, that's shorter than our uh, 1975 MG Midget. And that is a very small it only car. Fits two people. And it only fits two people. <laughs> and that's two small people. Yes. Um, now, VinFast says it may be bringing the VF3 to the U.S. market. But to be clear, VinFast hasn't even started making the VF3 yet. It's just an idea at the moment. Correct. But VinFast currently has 13 showrooms in California. Um, but data from experience shows that only 237 VinFast cars have been registered in California through September of last year. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if VinFast can gain a foothold in the U.S. I mean, if you think back to 1986, when Hyundai first started selling cars here in the U.S., their reputation was spotty. I mean, no one had ever seen a South Korean made car before. Fast forward to today, Hyundai and Kia sell over a million cars in the U.S. Um, last year, they sold 1.3 million. So it's not impossible that VinFast could repeat what's been done before by Japanese and Korean automakers. But that was before Tesla came along. Mm. So I think that the playing field has dramatically changed. That's a good point. All right. Well, what do you guys think? Would you be interested in a sub $20,000 mini SUV EV from VinFast? Kind of want to see how people actually fit into it. Yeah. I don't know if you kind of need to be blended first or <laughs> what the deal is. All right, I have a riddle for you, Jesse. How many companies does it take to make software and hardware for electric vehicles? Um, well, Tesla makes the hardware and the software for their cars. So one. <laughs> Wrong. 12. It doesn't take 12 companies to make software. I mean, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this news story. In December, 12, count them, 12 Japanese companies, including Toyota, Honda, Subaru, Panasonic, Mazda, Nissan, Denso, and a bunch of semiconductor companies that you've probably never heard of, got together and formed the Advanced SOC Research for Automotive, or ASRA. I don't get it. There are over 1,000 semiconductors used in cars nowadays, right? So ASRA is going to pool their talents and develop high-performance semiconductors and software for cars by 2028. And they will start installing these new chips in cars starting in 2030. So for two years, they're just going to be like looking at them. Like, oh, this, this is chip. so good. Look at this chip. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Um, but no, they're not. They're not going to do that. They're not? No, because who's in charge of this group? Um, let me look it up. 
Uh, Toyota Motors Senior Fellow Kaiji Yomoto is chair of the new research group. There you go. There you go. See, they're going to have some meetings, and the first couple are going to be a lot of fun with whiteboards and get-to-know-you games. And then when the fun is over, the Honda representative is going to want to go in one direction, and the Toyota team is going to want to go in another direction. And then Mazda's going to side with Honda, and Nissan's going to side with Toyota, and Subaru and Panasonic are going to form their own block. And before you know it, they'll be different factions. Eating in different conference rooms and meetings will get postponed, and there'll be nasty letters sent back and forth, and two years will go by, and nothing will get accomplished. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Tesla will be flying ahead with full self-driving and faster chips. And by 2028, some of these companies will have already gone bankrupt. Okay. We'll see who's right. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I I, I feel like they think they're going to do it. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like, didn't a bunch of Japanese companies get together to form a um, removable battery pack? And they just took years and years just to do something simple like that. And mm -hmm. then they gave up. And speaking of EV software. Chevy is pausing sales of the 2024 Chevy Blazer EV because of, wait for it. Wait for it. Here it comes. Almost there. Software issues. Didn't Chevy open orders for the new Blazer EV just in September? Uh-huh. And now, less than four months later, Chevy has had to halt them. Why? Well, according to Scott Bell, GM's VP of Global Chevy, we are aware that a limited number of Blazer EV owners have experienced several software quality issues. Customer satisfaction is our priority, and as such, we will take a brief pause on new deliveries. Okay, so what are the issues? GM wouldn't say exactly, but reading the forums, it appears that many people are having problems, including infotainment system glitches and problems charging at DC fast chargers. Several early car reviewers highlighted major software issues when testing the new SUV. For instance, Kevin Williams at Inside EVs, a guy who loves EVs, reported it on one of the most catastrophic road trips he's ever had, which, by the way, left him stranded. What happened? According to Williams, the Blazer's infotainment OS all but completely died numerous times during the trip, from the screen flashing to a totally black display. He had no apps, no navigation, no charge routing. He would reboot, and then it would work for a bit, and then crash again. When he plugged in at an Electrify America charger in Virginia, the Blazer started charging for about five minutes, and then went into limp mode, dropping to just five kilowatts of charging speed with a bunch of warning lights popping up on the dash. Williams felt so uncomfortable at this point that he drove to a nearby Chevy dealer and he left the Blazer there for GM to take. Williams had the car for a few days, by the way, over 28 hours of driving and charging before he finally gave up. And this is a car that GM gave him for the review. So they handpicked it. And by the way, Edmonds, which takes reports from all kinds of customers who just got the car, reported 23 different software issues in less than two months. But but hang on, hang on. D didn't Motor Trend just pick the Blazer EV as the 2024 SUV of the year? Yep. Has Motor Trend ever given the Tesla Model Y an award? Um, let me see. No. So the, the best-selling car in the world, the most efficient battery electric SUV, the safest car in the world, one of the most affordable electric SUVs in the world, one of the most reliable, fun to drive, quickest, longest range electric SUV, and Motor Trend has ignored it. And instead, given the award for the best SUV to the Chevy fucking Blazer. Unbefuckable. The car that GM just had to stop selling because the software sucks so bad. That gets the Motor Trend award. Yeah. Look, software is a huge problem for OEMs because the software has to talk to dozens of other systems in the vehicle that are all made by different suppliers. And this is why we're seeing this problem, right? They had to put out the car and probably hadn't fully tested all the functions because some of those supplies probably just came in and, you know, got to update the firmware and all that stuff. And so, yeah, you've got a car that's basically a joke. Right. But I mean, it, it's fine to have a joke car. It's not. But you know, fine. You, you you put out a car and it sucks and you have to stop selling it. We've seen this before with like the ID3 had a lot of software problems. Didn't even sound as bad as this. But then you have fucking Motor Trend well, going you, like, you know what? This is the best SUV of the year. But you know why? Well, there's two reasons why. One is Motor Trend has a little thing called advertisements in it. And those are paid for by the car companies. And the second reason why is they're all sitting around the editorial board meeting rent and they're like, well, I guess we got to give it to the Model Y this year. We can't f***ing give it to the Tesla every year. We can't give it to the Tesla even one year. <laughs> Do you know where our advertising comes from? Man, that it's... Ugh. If that software glitch wasn't enough for GM this week, GM said that the Blazer EV and the Cadillac Lyric have now both lost the federal EV tax credit as of January 1st because of two minor components that aren't made in the U.S., 
But GM says it's only a temporary setback and they will source those components locally and get the credit back in early 2024. No specifics on exactly when, though. <laughs> OK, let me get this straight. GM stopped making the Chevy Bolt, which is the only EV they had that would now qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit. The Blazer EV is halting deliveries due to software problems and the Lyric won't get the federal tax credit until next year, uh, maybe. I mean, way to start the year off strong. You change the whole story, Mary. Yeah, no, that's great leadership. That's wow, amazing. I'm serious, you led. And as we've reported previously, due to changes by the IRS, now that the new year is here, EV customers in the US should be able to get their tax credit taken right off of the EV sticker price at the dealer. And that's why over 7,000 auto dealers across the U.S. have signed up with the IRS to be able to issue the rebate directly to EV customers without the need for customers to pay the higher price and then wait months to file for the tax credit. Here to discuss this further is our very own ice card dealer, Vinny Bambuzzolini. Vinny, what's your take on this? Vinny Bambuzzolini here, folks. You trust that automotive advisor with the best automotive dealership in the tri-state area. You're not going to find a better deal, folks, because my attorney just told me use customers can now get $4,000 off a used electric vehicle. I said to him, what are you talking about? Who's paying for this? And he said, the American government, the good old US of A. So I sent my guys out to locate a whole bunch of used EVs and had Lenny spiff them up a bit with the little spit shine, you know? Look at them, folks. A whole bunch of used EVs to choose from. Come on down and get one. Vinny, that looks like a Peugeot E208. Yeah, so what about it? They're only sold in Europe. It's still got a European license plate on it. They, they don't work here. Hey, don't pick on the French. It's got E, doesn't it? E stands for electrical, which means 4,000 buckaroos off the sticker price. 2,000 for me, 2,000 for you. Is that Fiat 500E missing a bumper? What's it to you? And that Nissan Leaf looks like it's been in an accident. Accident, schmaccident. A little bondo and it's as good as new. I mean, is the battery even under warranty anymore? Trust me. We've got warranties for everything. The whole exhaust system, the carburetor, all the belts, all the pumps, and the fuel tank. There's no exhaust system on an EV, Vinny. There you go, then. Nothing to worry about. Does your service department even know how to service EVs? What are you even talking about? As you've been telling everybody for years, there's nothing to service on an EV. So there you have it, folks. Come on down to Vinny Bambuzzolini's auto dealership, pick yourself up a nice, new-to-you, used EV, and we'll get some cash for both of us from Uncle Sam. If you're so excited about EVs, then why did you and more than 3,000 other auto dealerships in the U.S. sign this letter pleading President Biden to put the brakes on adopting EVs? That was before I knew about the free money from the government. Where? Did you see the IRS somewhere? Are they coming to my dealership? I, I, Hang on, I gotta make a call. Vito, shred all the french fries. The feds are coming to dinner. Did you hear me, Vito? The feds are coming to dinner. I gotta go. Uh, Benny Bambuzzolini, everybody. Sorry, I had to go to the bathroom. What did I miss? I was just talking to Vinny about how he signed that letter to President Biden. I mean, I feel like Vinny wrote that letter because, you know, in that letter, in the very first sentence, it said, we are auto dealers from across the country who collectively sell every major brand in the U.S. Every major brand. Tesla is the number one selling EV in the U.S. and none of them sell it. Mm. Sorry, I miss Vinny, though. Yeah, again. All right, for some SpaceX news, let's go to Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. And uh, I know I haven't used my Henson razor in a while, but it is the best razor on the market. One of the reasons for this is that it doesn't shave badly. Unlike most razors on the market, which don't hold the blade very strongly because they're usually made out of plastic and don't have like five blades or something. Mm. Having five blades doesn't help you. No, um, it was to make up for the fact that it's so crappy. They're like, well, if we say, if we say that they got five blades. It's so people, American, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, well, we've got four blades. Well, hey, we've got five. You know how when you shave, you have that blade. Well, now we got five of them. It's even better. Um, it's not better. Having five blades means that the first blade is going to come. It's going to pull your beard hair out of its follicle. Then the next blade is going to come and it's going to cut your beard hair and, and it's going to go right back into your face. And sometimes it'll grow out of your face wrong. Right. And you might be like, that's how I get my baby butt smooth finish. No, <laughs> that's how you get acne. Yep. Um, so this is why I love my Henson razor. I've basically stopped getting acne since I've started using my Henson and I love it. So you're going to like it too. You can use our code now, you know, at checkout to get a hundred blades for free.
In SpaceX news, Elon reposted the Falcon fleet's life-leading rocket completed its 19th and final launch and landing on December 23rd. This one reusable rocket booster alone launched to orbit two astronauts and more than 860 satellites, totaling 260 plus metric tons in three and a half years. And Steve Jervison said, what a year. You can see how flight proven boosters like Green have grown as a percentage of SpaceX launches. They've been reflown 19 times now, something industry incumbents used to think would be impossible. Elon said, and if all goes well, SpaceX's total launch mass to orbit will increase 50 percent next year, not including Starship. And he went on to say, it's just in order to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. And Elon said, just completed static fire test of Flight 3 Super Heavy Booster. So that's going to be the one that hopefully is going to re-land someday. Hopefully. Hopefully. Knock on wood. All right, it's time for Going Green. So we'd like to thank Joa for sponsoring this episode of Tesla Time News. Joa is the world's leading provider of Tesla accessories. Their team has over 15 years of experience at engineering unique products for autos, charging, and lifestyle. So you should really check out Joa for all of those things that you didn't even know you needed for your Tesla. Today, I want to tell you about their screen protector. So it's one of those things that you may not think about, because if you're like me, you're like, I only get a screen protector for my phone in case I lay it down on a hard surface or if something like keys in my pocket scratch it. That won't happen to my Tesla screen. But if you're like me, you're constantly, you know, having drinks in your car and hitting the brakes and doing lots of things that can scratch your precious screen. So I just installed the Joa screen protector in my Model 3 and I love it. First of all, it comes meticulously packed in this special auto alignment frame, which made installation a breeze. It comes with everything you need to install it right the first time with no alignment issues or bubbles. Joa offers two finishes, crystal clear and matte. So you chose the ultra fine matte and as soon as you put it on, I could see the screen way better because it's got anti-glare and anti-fingerprint features. I love it. And it's made of 9H tempered glass. If you know about the Mohs hardness scale, it goes from 1 to 10, 1 being soft and scratchable and 10 being diamond. Even a masonry drill bit has a lower hardness than this screen protector. And I just want to say screen protectors are one of those things that I always have difficulty installing, but Joa made it super easy with their auto alignment frame and it went on perfect edge to edge. Joa products are created for Tesla owners by Tesla owners. The Joa team wants to enhance your driving experience. You can check out all of Joa's products at joalife.com. And for a limited time, you can use our code for 5% off your order. All right. Remember Modvion? Yeah, it's a Swedish startup that we interviewed, what, three years ago now. They make wind turbine towers out of wood. Right. Well, get this. The world's largest wooden turbine tower has now been built, and the turbine is up and running outside of Skara, which is northeast of Gothenburg in Sweden, and it's providing two megawatts of power onto the Swedish grid, enough to power 400 homes. So how big are we talking? The tower is 344 feet or 105 meters tall, and if you count it to the tip of the highest blade, it's 492 feet or 150 meters tall, or in American football fields, it's like one and a half football fields tall. Thank you. Wow, that's tall. So the towers are made of layers of wood, right? Kind of like uh, plywood is made. Yes, this tower has 144 layers of laminated veneer lumber with each layer consisting of three millimeters of spruce. That is grown sustainably, by the way. The tower is built in seven sections with 28 stacked modules that are held together with steel fittings glued in place. So why do it this way? And why not just use steel? Well, for one thing, Modvion says that the tower is tougher than steel um, and the tower is carbon negative. Also, the modular pieces are easier and cheaper to transport. And when it's done being a wind tower, Modvion says that the tower walls can be reused as high strength beams for the building industry. That would be cool to have recycled wind tower beams uh, framing a building. Yeah. Modvian plans to open a factory in 2027 that will manufacture 100 wooden wind towers annually. All right, it's time for sunspots. Do you remember solar roadways? Solar freaking roadways. Yeah, that was the Idaho based husband and wife startup that was working on these solar panels that could replace asphalt. So you could actually build roads out of solar panels and generate electricity from all that space that roads take up. Correct. Now, do you remember when we reported on the French solar roadways experiment years ago? It was back in 2016. Mm. Uh, France had this plan to build a thousand kilometers or 620 miles of solar built into their highways to provide power for five million homes. But before building it, they wanted to test it. So the French government spent five million euros to build a test road called Wattway. It's one kilometer long stretch of solar roadway in Normandy that they estimated would power 5,000 homes. Wattway consisted of 2,800 solar panels starting in the town of 
Tuvarol a perch built by the construction company Colas. The solar roadway has repeatedly had solar panels come loose. And in fact, in May of 2018, shortly after they built it, 90 meters of the roadway had to be filled in with asphalt because it had fallen apart and was no longer safe to drive on. So let me guess, the whole idea of solar roadway is now being called a joke, a disaster, a big expense of failure. Yep, but here's the thing. It turns out, according to this report in Global Construction Review, that the engineers who designed the Wattway Solar Roadway didn't take into account the damage that would be caused by thunderstorms, leaf mold, and huge tractors driving on it. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. The French government hired an engineering firm to build a road, and the firm they hired didn't take into account things that would be on a road. So what do you think, Philippe, of my design for the Surrey Roadway? Marcel, this is magnifique. It is so flat and shiny. Have you considered all of these specifications that will be required to make it last that we talked about last week? Uh, leaf mold, uh, thunderstorms, tractors, they are so icky. Instead, I designed my road to withstand very French things. French things, Marcel? Qu'est-ce que c'est? You know, Philippe, French things, the things that matter. Like you can drop a baguette on the road. Will it survive? And the answer is we. Oui. I have tested it many times. And we, oui, Philippe, I have tested a stale baguette and it survived perfectly. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. That's how the FUD works. You misspend a lot of money doing something like solar the wrong way. And then when it inevitably doesn't work because you planned it to fail, you go, Solar is all a bell. Of course, we should stick with burning gasoline. Now, I do want to point out that many aspects of this Wattway solar road were actually a success. The panels generated 150,000 kilowatt hours of electricity in the first year, 2017. Now, you may say, well, that's only enough to power 30 French households, but this was built in Normandy, which only gets 44 sunny days per year on average. Why didn't they build it in like Marseille, which is sunny? It is not the way that we do things here. Um... It, it is one of the worst places to build such a road. Um, and that electricity earned 4,550 euros. Right. So, I mean, if they had just engineered it correctly, put it in a sunny place, it probably would have done really well. And we might be talking about actually doing this more more places. But, I mean, I do agree. Rooftops are the, the low-hanging fruit. We should do that first. Yes. But, I mean, yeah, if you're going to test this out, hire an engineering firm that at least understands how to build it. What do you mean? <laughs> But look, there is a new Wattways solar road installation in the Netherlands. Colas Group, the same company that did the other one, they finally, I guess, figured some shit out. And uh, they worked with the Dutch construction company BAM Royal Group. And they installed 1,000 square meters or 10,000 square feet of solar cycle paths in the north of Holland and North Brabant provinces. The Dutch installations have increased power, 148 watts per square meter compared to the older paths with 119 watts per square meter. And the provinces hope to produce... 160 megawatt hours per year of renewable energy in the first year, helping to supply the Dutch grid. Now, the sites will be monitored and maintained for five years. These Wattways cycle paths are made with a new type of solid solar panel that's only a few millimeters thick and is glued to the existing cycle paths and then coated with a multi-layer of resin and polymers. And if you look closely, it looks like they do what boat owners have seen before. Uh, they mix sand in with the top layer of epoxy to provide that grip. My guess is that because these paths won't be seeing the same loads as roads with cars and trucks, that they will probably last longer. By the way, the Netherlands have over 35 5,000 kilometers of cycle paths. Uh, viewers, send us some photos and videos if you um, happen across this solar path because I want to see it. I think it's great. I love solar panels wherever you can stick them. But I was wondering, why not put the solar over the, these bike paths? Because if you had these um, like canopies, you could block off you know, rain and, and snow and you'd get way better sunlight and you'd probably have cheaper solar panels. Right. Um, or you could just put them on your roof. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have to do much else to them. Hey, and if you'd like to put solar on your roof, call our friends at Energy Pal. They will help you go solar for less. And they'll do it all for free because they're experts. And they just take that portion that the installer would have charged you anyway that you didn't know about. And they'll take that so that they can help you. And they're not biased. They don't go with any one particular company. They listen to what you want to do. Uh, link is down below. Tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. Remember, we need your stories. Send them to us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. Make them two minutes or less. Shoot them in the landscape with good audio and no music. What do we got this week, Jess? Tim sent us this story about a table for your Tesla frunk. Hello, I'm sitting in front of a Tesla Model 3 and uh, sitting on a nice table. We have the guy here who made this and it's a CEO. 
Hi, I'm Peter from Frankly. Um, I developed and produced uh, Frankly, the table for your Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. I got the idea of during supercharger sessions or spending time in nature, and I was just always missing a surface to work on or just prepare some food, a snack, a coffee, um, and that's why I got the idea to utilize the, the space in the frunk. You can just pop up your frunk and set up your table and get cooking. It usually just took me five minutes to I had my coffee in my hand <laughs> and it was um, really great. And still with it installed, you have all the, the options to keep everything in here, whatever you want, like a charging cable. Um, I just keep a cooking stove in here usually with some coffee and pots and then when I'm on the road I can just set it up and when I'm done supercharging or whatever I was doing I'll just store it away and close the hood. You use it already on on a tour? Yeah I've just been on a six week long trip through Scandinavia, through Sweden and Norway um, all the way to the North Cape there and it was really just a blessing to have, especially in Scandinavia. How I can get one of these? Um, I currently sell them on my website, that's uh, frank.ly and we ship them all over the EU with currently roughly a month so we can have one. So uh, the EU, um, what's with outside the EU for the uh, international? <laughs> if you're interested in getting one or if you're planning to just DIY something yourself, you can always just reach out to me and we shortly find a solution. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Nice to be here. And uh, now you know. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't one. sound like you can get it here in the U.S. yet, but I, don't, uh, I want one. I know. Well, go to Frankly and uh, see maybe maybe if enough people ask for it, he'll send it here. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Uh, this week we've got the first Cybertruck crash. It's on video, and we've also got Tesla's response to the Fuddy Reuters article, along with uh, so much more. Head over to Patreon.com/slash Now You Know and support us for just a buck a month, and you'll get all of these Patreon bonus stories. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the Patreon poll, uh, which if you join us for two bucks a month, you can uh, answer the questions every week. Uh, so what was our question this week? Where would you like to travel on Starship? Oh, I know where I want to go. Okay. Where do they want to go? Um, Australia and New Zealand. That's where I want to go. Followed by Japan. Nice. So yeah, I want to go all three places. It's got to be nice place. Far away. Far away. <laughs> All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Tesla owner Silicon Valley said Starlink satellites flying over Japan. Elon said, nope, that's Santa and his magic reindeer. Well, did Santa get a whole bunch more reindeer? <laughs> I don't see one of them being red at the front. So Mark Andreessen was replying to this post about caffeine consumption that basically you shouldn't be drinking any before bedtime. And he said, no. Elon said, sure, I will be alive. I've gone several days without coffee, but what's the point of waiting so long? I like the ritual and aesthetics. Don't notice the stimulant effect much unless I have several cups. Not an obvious cognitive win. Shibatoshi Nakamoto said, what's something that used to be awesome, but now is terrible? I'll start. Portland, Oregon. Elon said, yeah, what happened there? John Ehrlichman said, 28 years ago, Elon Musk fixing his 1978 BMW with old parts from a junkyard. Today, Musk is worth more than three times BMW. And <laughs> Elon said, crazy. Bob Walker said, I saw a documentary in grad school on lemmings. The first one ran off, then all the others followed. Later on, learned it was fake. Elon said, the real lemmings were those who believed the lemmings story. Elon Musk said, AI movies next year. So that's this year. Doge Designer says, does anyone still remember NFTs? Elon said, turns out they were kind of fungible. Adrian says, web links to data you don't own. Elon said, yeah, at least encode the JPEG on the blockchain. Elon tweeted out this meme, seeing humans make AI memes, seeing AI make human memes. Tim Urban says, tip for the fat. I hit peak weight during COVID, then stopped eating breakfast and lost 20 pounds. After a week, you stop being hungry in the morning, so it takes no discipline. Negative discipline because it's one less thing to deal with in the morning. Cuts out a meal I didn't actually need and turns into a no effort 16 hour intermittent fast every day. Elon says, nothing at all in the morning. And Tim Urban said, nothing in the a.m. except black coffee. Once noon hits, good to go. I'm doing that as well, and it works really well. I do that by accident all the time. I'll just be like, oh, it's three o'clock and I'm still not hungry. Ken Swift says, I'm hearing the Biden administration is going to force some sort of mediation similar to the one that Elon Musk talked about when this war first started, except we have hundreds of thousands of people dead now. Elon was vilified for even mentioning it. 
David Sachs says this is exactly right. When Elon floated his peace plan last year, it was denounced as pro-Russian by Zelensky himself and attacked in the harshest terms by many on this platform. Now the Biden administration would love to have that deal. Elon said many deaths could have been avoided. Tesla Synopsis says, when can we have FSD version 12? Highly anticipated. Elon said it's already on a lot of cars, but given that it's a completely new architecture, we are doing extra testing. It works very well in California, but needs more training for heavy precipitation areas. Hmm. I guess that means rain places where there's not drought. OK, Sunny Madra says history is written by the victors, a quote from Winston Churchill. Elon said that used to be true, but these days the losers are very much alive and have lots of time on their hands to edit Wikipedia. Elon says congrats to the SpaceX team on achieving 96 launches in 2023. Mike Ben says if you don't do an eye for an eye, you still end up blind. And the only people who get to keep their eyeballs are the people who poked your eye out. Elon says, you cannot be weak, but I strongly disagree. An eye for an eye is foolish and primitive, leading to an endless cycle of retribution. Corey says, just a car company. Holmar's catalog says, computer mother vision, baby. Elon says, it is increasingly clear that all roads lead to AGI. Tesla is building an extremely compute efficient mini AGI for full self-driving. Elon then said, we will return to the moon soon. Dana N says, people seem to be missing the sheer audacity of Elon Musk's plan for Starship. He is building an automotive production line for Starships. He's aiming for one per week at each factory or 104 per year. Elon said the super heavy booster can be used more frequently than the ship as it returns in about six minutes and can theoretically be ready for reflight in an hour. The ship needs to complete at least one orbit, but often several to have the ground track line back up with the launch site. So reuse may only be daily. This means that ship production needs to be roughly an order of magnitude higher than booster production. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 a year, but ideally rising to 300 a year. Elon went on to say, next week I'll do a company talk for SpaceX, followed later by a company talk for Tesla after the 10K. I will recap the talented team's amazing accomplishments of 2023 and describe exciting plans for 2024 and beyond. These will be posted publicly to SpaceX and Tesla. What's up, Frank says, gotta say you nailed the auto wipers. Wow, Elon. Elon said, sorry it took so long. And uh, he retweeted this from the boring company. The Cybertruck was driving around the Vegas loop. That's fun. Elon said the next stage of the Starship program should be called the Two Towers. Christopher Dungeon says, here's Elon Musk in 2021 correctly predicting Tesla's Model Y becoming the world's top selling vehicle in 2023. Elon says, while certainly not perfect, my batting average for most predictions is quite good. My schedule optimism, without which I probably wouldn't have even tried to do many of the endeavors, gets the best of me sometimes, but I always deliver in the end. Chuck Cook says, Elon, we're eager to know the timeline for the Cybertruck getting FSD beta. Is it dependent on the public release of version 12 or are there specific training issues with hardware 4 on the Cybertruck that necessitate a separate training and model? We'd love to learn more. Elon said, Cybertruck is necessarily lowest priority for full self-driving as there are only a few hundred Cybertrucks in the field compared to the roughly 5 million other Teslas. Omar's catalog says the U.S. government has agreed to drop six charges against Sam Bankman Freed so that they can get back to figuring out what to charge Elon Musk with. And Elon laughed and said, seriously, Walter Isaacson said these will be the most important cases for journalism and publishing in our lifetime. If AI companies have to cut deals with news organizations and publishers to license their content feeds for use as AI training data, that could save local journalism as well as magazines. He's talking about The New York Times suing OpenAI. And Elon says, I think you're right. Mark Andreessen says, specifically, pessimism is easy to sell to young adults since it sounds world weary and wise. So it's a cheat code for cynics and depressives who want followings. It's only later that the kids realize that they've been sold a bill of goods and by then it costs them dearly. Elon said, never trust a cynic. They excuse their bad behavior with the rationale that, quote, everyone does it. Elon Musk says 2024 is going to be even more crazy is my prediction. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Remember, share your stories and videos with us at hello and now you know channel.com. Let's see what we got. Daryl sent us this matte black Model Y that he saw in Las Vegas. Kathy saw this Tesla taxi in Austria. Chris spotted this Lucid Air in Little Rock, Arkansas. Jay saw this Cadillac Celestique in Detroit, Michigan. Edwin spotted this Model 3 Highland on the highway in Zagreb, Croatia. John saw the Cybertruck in Escondido, California. Hardick spotted a Hummer EV near Portland, Oregon. Frank saw the Cybertruck at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru in Prosper, Texas. Christopher saw 
this Chevy Bolt Police Community Service Vehicle in Manhattan Beach, California. Dave spotted this Hyundai Ioniq 6 at the parking lot in London, Ontario, Canada. Tom saw this Model 3 with the license plate no brakes in Wisconsin. Ken spotted this original Tesla Roadster at the Devon, Pennsylvania Tesla Service Center. Shabir spotted this cool wrapped Model 3 at the Park Royal Supercharger in London, England. Danny saw this Fisker Ocean in Orlando, Florida. Z sent us this video of the Tesla Semi truck in action on the 237 in Sunnyvale, California. And Chris sent us these drone shots of the Tesla Diner construction progress. Oh, Ooh. it's looking cool. Coming along. All right, we've got EV tip of the week. And Adam sent us this tip about cooling your cell phone in a Tesla. He said, when I'm a passenger, I quite often stream live content from my phone to my tablet when I'm on long trips. As you may be aware, this can heat up your phone quite a lot. But if you slot it gently into the AC gap of the Model 3 or Y, it gets better service from the cell tower and keeps really cool. Unless you have the heat on. <laughs> Very good tip, Adam. Thank you so much. Remember, send those in to us at hello at now you know All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Let's see what we got in the world. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Steven reporting from Ukiah, California. Supercharger. The eight stall version two, it seems. I'm only getting 102, 105 kilowatts. Um, there's no pull through charger. So if you have a trailer, you have to de ice the, the spots next to you. It's in the backyard or the side yard of this beautiful Victorian house. And across the street is this nice park. And if the hot dog vendor is there, um, that means the restrooms next to him are open from nine to three usually each day. If those restrooms are not open, just walk that way a little bit and you'll come to the conference center and there are restaurants in there if it's open. Um, anyway, this is off the freeway 101. It uh, doesn't have lighting. Yes, it does have lighting at night. It, doesn't, it does have a, a waste basket. Um, there's a place to walk your dog. Uh, there are restaurants in Ukiah downtown just a few blocks away. So, um, But because of the lack of a pull-through station for me, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. So now you know, thanks. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Rene. I'm in Quebec City and it's summertime. I'm at the latest version 3 supercharger. There's eight stalls and there's four stalls of charge point. The amenities are a grocery store right behind me and there's a Canadian tire in the back there. And it's a nice place invite you to come. Now you know. Hey Zach and Jesse, it's John from New Jersey. We're traveling to Cleveland, Ohio. This is the Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania stop with six stalls. Advertises is 120 kW, but I'm on one stall over here, 3B, don't go here. I was only getting 50, and I'm only getting like 106 on this one. So, and it is not a great I'm at location. There is a Starbucks over here. There's a restaurant next to it, uh, behind a residence inn, but otherwise, uh, try to skip this one if you can. There's one that's further south in Pennsylvania that's a 250 KW. I'd recommend that one. I'd give this one a 3 out of 10. Here we are in the rain at the St. Leonard Dustin Supercharger. It's located in a parking lot of a rest area. We give this one a score of Eight out of ten. Hey, Zach and Jesse, here we are in Suquamish, Washington, um, at the new supercharger station. How many? How many are there, kid? One, two. How many down here? One, two, three, four. Nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. Actually, there are twelve at the Suquamish Clearwater Casino. And this is a pretty busy place. You'll see that's the parking garage for the casino. Looking over here and cars coming in on the traffic, cross the Agate Pass Bridge. And wow, look at the beautiful view you get of the sound. Yeah, we'll give this a 10 because there's a lot to do here. And it's in our home area. We've been waiting for this to open for months now. And it opened just a couple days ago. At any rate, we rate this a 10. Come on to the Puget Sound in Washington State. 
Thank you so much for doing Supercharger Reviews. If you want to check them out, you can head to our website, nowyouknowchannel.com. We have a map with all the superchargers on there, and you can check them all out. And by the way, did he, I, I just realized this the other day, our website doesn't have any ads on it. That's right. And we're not going to put any on it. Probably the only one on the internet. Because we couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> all right, it's time for new superchargers, and we got a lot because we missed last week, so here we go. We got the 16 stall in Vaughn at Major Mackenzie Drive, West, Ontario. The 12 stall in Egadale, Norway. The 6 stall in... Kitakayushu, Japan. The 8th stall in saint die de vosque France. The 24th stall in West Covina, California. Number 25 in Denmark is the 8th stall in Blockhouse, Denmark. The 6th stall in Nipawa, Manitoba, Canada. Number 25 in Missouri is the 12th stall in Chesterfield. Number 47 in Arizona is the 12th stall in Scottsdale, Arizona. 6th stall in Thrumster, New South Wales, Australia. Number 20 in New Zealand is the 6th stall in Rakura, New Zealand. Number 209 in Canada is the 6th stall in Russell, Manitoba, Canada. The 12th stall in Hawthorne, East Victoria, Australia. The 8th stall in Fiume Veneto, Italy. The 6th stall in Kobe, Japan. The 12th stall in Christiansand, Norway. The 8th stall in Epinal, France. The 16th stall in Oskarsham, Sweden. The 8th stall in Firth, Germany. The 12th stall in Berg de Peg, France. Number 123 in Norway is the 24th stall in Inlandsporten, Norway. The 12th stall in Henderson, North Carolina. The 32th stall in Hawaiian Gardens, California. Number 46 in the Netherlands is the 12th stall in Enshed, Netherlands. Number 18 in Iowa is the 8th stall in Ames, Iowa. Number 54 in Maryland is the 16th stall in Arbutus, Maryland. The 8th stall in Cherbourg, France. The 12th stall in York Charest, France. The 16th stall in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number 83 in Sweden is the 16th stall in Runneby, Sweden. The 12th stall in Orsa, Sweden. Number 47 in Massachusetts is the 12th stall in Framingham. The 8th stall in Zeltweg, Austria. The 24th stall in Santa Clarita, California. The 20th stall in Bitterfeld, Germany. The 12th stall in Stawell, Victoria, Australia. The 3th stall in Kilmore, Victoria, Australia. Number 35 in Austria is the 9th stall in Megenhofen, Austria. Number 4 in DC is the 8th stall in Washington, DC. The 2 stall, 120 kilowatt in Coffs Harbor, Big Banana, New South Wales, Australia. The 12th stall in Walnut Creek, California. Number 4 in Puerto Rico is the 8th stall in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. Number 54 in Georgia is the 16th stall in Gainesville. The 12th stall in San Antonio, Texas. Number 84 in Australia is the 6th stall at Tweed Heads in New South Wales. The 20th stall in Norbod Sud, France. Number 31 in Finland is the 8th stall in Pori, Finland. The 3th stall in Foshan, China. Number 191 in Germany is the 8th stall in Mageburg, Germany. We get the 12th stall in Sisteron Super U, France. The 12th stall in Rockland, California. Number 147 in Texas is the 8th stall in El Paso. The 20th stall in Bakersfield, California. Number 67 in North Carolina is the 12th stall in New Bern. Number 27 in Tennessee is the 24th stall at Cornersville, Tennessee. The 6th stall in Kampfenikvet, Thailand. Number 13 in Thailand is the 6th stall at Lempang, Thailand. Number 103 in Japan is the 4th stall in Tokyo. The 8th stall in Suffolk, Virginia. Got number 78 in Pennsylvania, the 12th stall in Exton, Pennsylvania. Number 43 in Ohio is the 12th stall in Ashland. Number 73 in Virginia is the 8th stall in Woodbridge. Number 42 in Nevada is the 12th stall in Laughlin, Nevada. Number 79 in Italy is the 12th stall in Padova North. Number 1916 in China is the 6th stall in Guangzhou. Number 154 in South Korea is the 8th stall in Swangnam. The 6th stall at Skyline Tower in Hong Kong. Number 74 in Hong Kong is the 3th stall in Springdale Villas. Number 178 in France is the 2 stall at Bourges en Bresse, France. And number 423 in California, number 2120 in the USA, and number 5952 in the world is the 16th stall at Menifee, Scott Road, California. Woo! And as we start the new year, I wanted to remind everyone of this quote from George Orwell's novel, 1984. The party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final, most essential command. We are a news show. We try very hard not to be a rumor show. And while we have fun here on the show and we joke around, we strive to bring you independent news as citizen journalists. And you may think, well, you guys aren't trained journalists. You don't have fact checkers. Actually, we do. We have thousands of them. We have you. If we get something wrong, believe me, we hear about it from our viewers. What we don't have are ties to corporate advertisers who dictate what we report on and how we report on it. If we report on a story, you can bet your sweet bippy that Jesse and I want to report on it and our take on the story is our own. 
Getting back to that Orwell quote, we, like Elon, like going back to first principles. And in journalism, that means researching the facts. What's really happening? Whether it's how many Teslas are coming out of a gigafactory or getting our butts into the seats of new EVs, our job is to try and bring you the big picture of what's going on in the world of EVs, renewable energy, and technology every week. And now we're going on our ninth year. Can you believe it? We could not have gotten here without you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your kind words in the comments. We had some really nice ones last week. Yeah, I really appreciate them. You know this time of year, especially with the early setting sun and the long winter nights, it's nice to know that we're part of this really big, wonderful community of folks, our extended family of special people. Smart, kind people like you. I love making our other shows each week, our Patreon bonus stories, our Investor Club bonus stories, more videos that are available to you, our patrons, who keep us afloat, both financially and spiritually. Thank you to these wonderful people whose names you see here at the end credits. If you'd like to join our Patreon family, it's easy. Just click the link in the show notes, patreon.com slash now you know, and there you'll find all kinds of perks for as little as a buck a month. We're gonna be launching a couple new channels this year, and I'm excited about our Cybertruck. So we'll see you guys next week. Now, now you know. know.